Hi everyone, this is an oil painting on a 16 by 16 inch canvas. I'm sorry I only have these final finishing stages on video because this painting was started over 15 years ago from a photograph I took on my first visit to Paris. And this painting was also done in the a la prima method that I tend to use despite all of the complexity of the architecture which means that I just started with painting. I did not do a detailed drawing first on the canvas in something like graphite or charcoal. But a nice trick that you can use, and what I did in this case, and in the case of most complicated oil paintings I do, is you can actually do your initial block in and killing the canvas layer of paint on your painting with acrylics instead of oils. The really fast drying times of the acrylics allows you to really iterate on and work in layers and perfect the exact placement, size, shape, uh, and maybe even value to some degree of your details of your painting before you start painting in with the oils, which obviously stay wet much longer so you can't as easily or as quickly work in a detailed sort of layout of your painting. And so to make sure this point is clear, you can paint oil paints on top of acrylics, but you never want to do that the other way around. In fact, the white primer on almost all store-bought canvas is acrylic-based gesso, although you can still get rabbit skin glue or other highly specialized primed canvases specifically for oils but the overwhelming majority of canvases you would get in an art supply store for oil or acrylic would be acrylic primed. So oils bond perfectly fine on an acrylic foundation like acrylic gesso or an acrylic underpainting, whereas if you tried to paint wet acrylic paint onto dry oil paint, the oil surface of an oil painting or oil-based underpainting would not allow the water-based acrylic to bond well to the painting surface. So if you're painting a painting like this in Alla Prima, which again is working directly in paint without having an initial drawing on the canvas in graphite or charcoal, it's really important to spend plenty of time with your underpainting to make sure that you get your perspective correct and get your core details really carefully placed. Because any painting like this with relatively modern architecture that's very strongly based on actual right angles, there's no wiggle room, even to a very non-artistically or sort of architecturally trained viewer, the painting will just look wrong if your perspective is off. So you really do need to take that time with your underpainting to make sure everything is in the right place, the right shape, size, and your perspective lines make sense before you move on. Otherwise, you're going to spend an incredible amount of time working wet on wet or waiting a day or two in between each layer to make corrections. And the bigger those corrections you need to make are, the longer it's going to take or the more likely you just might never even see them because once you're to the point of working in oils, you're going to be focusing more on blending and color and less on the overall image and you might not even spot fairly glaring perspective issues which can just ruin the final painting. And obviously for paintings like this, if you don't have the ability or liberty to stand outside for hours at a time, days on end, in front of the actual building, photographic reference is really important. But it's also really important to use the photographic reference in the best ways possible for making sure that the architecture and perspective are spot on and that the details where you need the details are accurate. But don't be a slave to that photograph. Artists should always be making artistic decisions on how to emphasize the things that are important, de-emphasize the things that are not important, and actually change things as is necessary to get the strongest impact and create the specific impression with the painting that they want to create. And these decisions all strongly revolve around the idea of emphasis. It's all about emphasizing what you want to emphasize as an artist, what you want to really capture the interest and attention of the viewer of the painting. So that's not only making things 
lesson focus that are less important and or less detailed. That involves contrast, that also involves how vibrantly colored they are, how bright the highlighting is, and these sorts of choices can also be very much about the feeling and the mood that you want to put the viewer in. You can take this very same painting from the same photograph and if you decide to be much more stronger in the bright highlights and make them much warmer and then cool off and add a lot of blue into the shadows, you're going to create a much more sort of upbeat, nice summer day kind of feeling where you could take the same exact layout, the same photograph and tone down the highlight, make the lighting more gray or blue and uniform and then it can feel like a much colder day and that's going to have a profound impact on the overall feeling that the painting provokes. And another risk that comes with relying too heavily on a photographic reference, especially with a painting like this where there's a lot of really specific details and placement you have to worry about, you can start worrying way too much about individual details and not the painting as a whole and not all of the forms in the painting as a whole. For example, I could become so intently focused on the likeness and details of the face that I may overlook the overall shape of the statue and how big the head is and the face is compared the, to the rest of the body. I may begin to forget that this is a statue of a humanoid form and lose sight of not only the overall proportions, but making sure that the lighting is very carefully balanced with the whole figure to get a very natural three-dimensional form that feels very humanoid. It's very tempted to just sort of focus one thing at a time, focus on the hand, focus on the face. On the day you're working on the face, you might be using darker shadows or brighter highlights. And on the day you're working on the hand, you just might accidentally be using a sort of different shading range of value. And this can really break apart the cohesive overall structure of that thing. And just overall in the painting in general, it's really important to always take a step back, put the photograph down, look at the whole painting, make sure it's coming across how you want it to come across, how things are emphasized, de-emphasized, and changed the way you think is best to evoke the feeling and ideas that you want the painting to evoke. And that's why for me, for paintings of this nature, it's almost always the case that after the critical details are all in, the vast majority of work for finishing the painting is moving around the whole thing and doing glazes and dry brushing to make sure that there's a more unified shading for everything. I'll just look really carefully and say, okay, this thing's shadows are too strong and it's emphasizing it too much or it's just ruining the overall form of the painting or that particular form like a statue. And I'll tone those shadows down and in other places I'll think, oh, this shadow isn't strong enough yet. So I'll deepen those shadows. And same thing with sunlight. Very often in paintings like this, one of the last steps is to do what I call a sunlight glaze or a sunlight wash when I'm using acrylics. And I'll mix a very transparent, uh, very low pigmented orange yellow sort of color and very lightly brush that over specific parts of the highlighted parts of the painting to make sure that you get that sense of natural sunlight really illuminating and giving warmth to those specific parts of the painting. And then with a highly detailed painting like this, once all of your details are in and once you're happy with all of your glazing to sort of unify, de-emphasize and emphasize where you see fit, it really helps to spend several sessions of a half hour or so staring at your painting and really looking for those nitpicky little things that are bugging you. And in this case here, you can see there was one little architectural detail here where I just thought the line for the sort of shadow under this metal bar just got carried away and was too big and too emphasized. And I just used a light color to take that back out and to de-emphasize it. And here's the finished painting. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you do like this or any of my other paintings, please visit my page on fineartamerica.com where you can purchase anything from beautifully framed museum quality prints of my paintings to throw pillows, cell phone cases, and even shower curtains of my art. 
or share this video with your friends if you think they might also enjoy watching. Your support is greatly appreciated and will allow me to make more art and videos more frequently. And thanks very much for watching.